All right. We're live. <laughs> hey, everybody that's in here. Jordan, Benz, Jeff, Patrick. What's going on? Speak freely. That's what I do. Well, why is my... Everything's reversed. Is everything reversed on that end? Alex? I'm going to have to edit this, I guess. Oh, we darn. Oh, does it come out fine? Because on the... Uh, on here, it's completely backwards. All the words are backwards, everything. I'll be darned. Hey, Alex. All right. Let's let a few people show up. We can chat a little bit while people show up. Not everybody get a chance to get in here. Hey, Hubs. What's up, man? <laughs> We're going to have some fun on a Saturday night. The Saturday night jamboree and hooting nanny. That's what I should have called it. This is Alex's first time in here, isn't it? Hi, Corey. Welcome. We're going to have us some fun tonight. Oh, finally. Finally, you're in here. You actually made one. Now I have to be on my best behavior. Holy crap. Jay Love Gardens. I'm telling you. Got to do it right now. <laughs> she's she's going to report back to Two Family Homestead how I'm doing on live streams. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. I really like it. And I do have a... Uh, yeah. uh, I do have a serious topic to talk about, too, in case we run out of things, to, you know, any questions or anything. There's a, a subject we can talk about that everybody can talk with each other about. This is really good. I like this. Dang, it's too quiet. You can almost hear Max panting. So let's have some questions. <laughs> Where are we all at? Have I got some kind of delay on I didn't know about? Or a buffering issue? Nope, no delays. Oh, dinner tonight, Hubs? It was a salad. We, uh, Gail went down to Bridgeport, West Virginia with my son and, uh, they went to see a friend of ours from New York. Um, in 2008, I went to, uh, New York city for, uh, New Year's Eve at Times Square with this guy that is now in Bridgeport, West Virginia for a couple of weeks. So Nick and Gail headed down. It was about a two-hour drive. So it was just me and Max here for dinner. So I had a salad, you know. Went a big old Mexican dinner last night, so I had to make up for it. Uh, asked Big Tim to make me dinner. Looking great. Thank you, Corey. Uh, I'm feeling great still. So... This is going to keep on going, and everything is great. It was sound and video, awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that, Patrick. Um, I'll tell you what. I went to the gym, met with the personal trainer, and you know he asked me what my goals were, and I said I wanted to get my, you know, get rid of the rest of the stomach, 
and build some upper body strength and, you know, do some strength training. He said, no problem. We can do all that. He said, what's your, your uh, goal weight? Your weight. And I said, 200 pounds. I want to get down to 200 pounds. And he said, okay, <laughs> you're not doing that. You get down to 199. He said, get rid of that too. He said, your new goal is 199. So no more 200. So I, <laughs> I thought that was pretty neat the way he, he emphasized that. And uh, he said, people will say their, their goal is 200 pounds. They might hit 210 and figure they're close enough because it's in the two still. So he said, go ahead and drop it to one. So 199 is my new uh, one now. Uh, I got my son and daughter law in town, all the kids in town because we've been eating pizza and junk food. I, you know, I feel you, Hubs. I, the worst part about doing this is when my sons are around. Because that's they eat pizzas and you know Taco Bell. I mean, and it's all here all the time. So until I get them on the program, yeah, we do. I mean, but it's gotten so good. I mean, I'm not even worried about it as much. Uh, thank you. And I agree. I do look good. <laughs> Looking great. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I'm just sticking with it. That's all. I'm not doing anything. You know, my friend Gary, uh, yesterday after, or yesterday evening after Gail got home from work, we went and had, uh, went to, you know, one of our favorite Mexican, Mexican restaurants here in town and had a nice dinner, came home, Gary came over and he and I went on a five mile bike ride. Uh, kind of worked off the <laughs> Mexican food. But yeah, it feels a lot better too. So let's see, what's in the news lately? Y'all following that girl missing? Um, and now the guy, I guess, is out. Yeah, we're having microwave junk for dinner tonight. But it gives me the time to get more of the harvest put up. There you go. I wish we had a better harvest. Um, I'm going to tell you a video I'm getting ready to put up. I wish I knew how to throw pictures up here. and I'm going to have to get with uh, two family homesteads, learn how to do some of this stuff while I'm live. But Nick planted some Carolina Reapers. And let me tell you what, I took a picture of those things that, you know, the ones that we harvested. And they're so hot, I think they burn the lens off the camera. It's unbelievable. The hottest pepper on earth is the Carolina Reapers. So I posted a picture of it on Facebook. Because we have friends in Cincinnati whose uh, daughter um, uh, her husband <laughs> is into these hot challenges. I don't know if you've seen that that those videos about that. Uh, the hot things. The one with Gordon Ramsay is just a riot. It's one of the funniest I've ever seen. But he does all that hot stuff, so I'm like, I asked Erica if she wanted any of these Carolina Reapers. Um, Gail's going out there in a couple weeks to see her friend Tina, so she'll take these to her. But anyway, someone commented on my Facebook where I put that picture that they look like strawberries. I told the dude, it's like, I'll give you $25 if you'll eat one of these strawberries. And he said, you're on. So I'm going to take him over, take one over to his house. And I'm going to shoot a video with him trying to eat one of those Carolina Reapers. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it or not. Um, I haven't seen anybody be able to do it yet. But, you know, he's he's crazy enough. He'll do he did one challenge where he ate it. We found uh, uh, some bread at work that had to have been six months, eight months old, all full of mold. He ate a piece of that bread on a challenge. So who knows? Picked my first hot pepper today, Hungarian.
Now, if you got habaneros, you know, we might want to trade. Nick grew some uh, uh, ghost peppers, too. You know, I was afraid um, those, <laughs> those Carolina Reapers would, like, migrate over to our regular green peppers and somehow infect them <laughs> and make them hot, but they didn't. They're doing good. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to shoot that, and I'm going to put that video up. And I'm going to have him, you know, like sign off on a disclaimer that I'm not responsible for anything that happens to him when he tries to eat one of these peppers. Take the hot peppers, dehydrate them, make a shake for other foods. Well, that sounds interesting. I never heard of that, Jeff. That's pretty cool. I hadn't heard of that one. But next year, I was saying on my last live stream, you know, this live, this is my third live stream. I did one on a Tuesday night, last Tuesday night, which for some reason, YouTube must do maintenance or something on Tuesday nights. I've had videos that wouldn't even upload on Tuesdays before. So that's going to be out. I did a Friday night, and this is a Saturday night, so... Uh, do it outdoors. Well, it's dark. It's 8 o'clock. Yes, they can. They absolutely can cause spontaneous combustion. I, I've seen a couple videos of people trying to eat them, and it's crazy uh, the pain they go through. So... We'll see. A midweek Wednesday would be a good night. Yeah, I want to do two a week. I think it's a lot of fun doing these, and I think I could do two of them, and it would be a lot of fun. Chocolate cake with a few shakes of pepper is awesome. I don't know about that one. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to give that one some thought before I jumped on that bandwagon. Uh, Wednesday, okay. We'll do, uh, let, we're going to do another one Wednesday night. Maybe I'll just do Wednesday night and Saturday nights. Uh, and we'll see how that works out. I don't think a lot of people do Saturday nights. That's why I picked Saturday night uh, to see how that works out. But definitely, I could do Wednesday and now I told them at work that, you know, this crazy scheduling keeps me away from uh, uh, St. Bernard Acres. So it's like getting abused. So at work, I can only do Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Those are the only days I'm going to be available. So I can be out at St. Bernard Acres. And going back to work on that cabin. Because the weather's going to be cool. It's not going to be raining every day. And I can get a lot done out there now. So, you know, if they can use me Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, that's great. I'll go in and do it. Otherwise, you know, I have to be out there. That's all there is to it. See, now that you mentioned that, I've heard that before about chocolate and, and a little heat. I was thinking boiling water over a campfire and making a cup of hot chocolate. That's how I equated chocolate and the heat. <sighs> I got something else in the mail today to test out. I'll be doing a review on. So get ready for that. A, I've never done any hammock camping uh, before. So this company, East Hills Outdoors, sent me their whole, that's the hammock, that's the rain fly, and that's the bug netting. So I'm going to do a whole review. We're going to go out, set it up, test it out, see how it works. Oh, yeah, mosquitoes. Uh, we, you know, 
I was standing outside last night at my bike while Gary was adjusting the something on his. And I'll bet I got eight mosquito bites. Um, just standing. I mean, it's they're horrible this year. So you never tried one, Hobbs? I'm, I'm going to try it out. I've never done it uh, myself. And it looks, this has a new way, you know, this strap. You don't have to learn all the knots to tie. It looks like it'd be fairly easy to use. Um, and it holds up to 600 pounds. <laughs> so I shouldn't have a problem with that. And I like the fact it's got the mosquito, the bug netting that you can put it around it or not. It, you know, it's removable because, you know, some nights you don't need the bug nets, I don't think. But I want to try it out. Gary and I are going to go uh, bike riding tomorrow afternoon. Uh, uh, we're going up the trail up further, see if we can find a spot that we can, like, just pull off and set stuff up and try it out, do reviews and stuff. Because we're going to get my Bushcraft and Survival channel going again. Is it really? I didn't know that, Jeff. That was one as wide as this is, if I put like a sleeping pad in it. Because I sleep on my side. I'm not a, I don't sleep on my back. Um, I was kind of wondering about that. Yeah, uh, Hubs, that's what Gary and I are going to do. We're going to concentrate on that kind of stuff. Um, we've got a, uh, I'm going to, that's where I'm going to do my bag camping and, uh, you know, up try to put up one video a week on that channel and then the all the rest of the stuff will go on this one of course but it started off really good and then again work got in the way and i don't know i don't know how these people do it you know they, they they're just on youtube all the time i don't know i don't i don't know how <laughs> i can't afford it I have to go to work. <laughs> but I see some of these people too, man. They do these, these, their live streams are strictly about basically eBaying and asking for money and super chats and all this kind of crap. And we've never gone, that, just not going to go that route. You know, just not for us. But I think the bushcraft and survival, that's going to be fun to get going again. And I definitely have to get a schedule for these live streams so that I can start building up a regular audience. And every, all of my subscribers know, yeah, they're going to know that every Wednesday I'm going to do one and every Saturday I'm going to do one. So I think... Saturdays might be, I don't, I have no clue. <laughs> I just know I didn't like Tuesday night. So did, did your garden turn out good this year? Oh yeah, I had to, you know, it's, I had these. I just needed to get them put up. I didn't think about it before. And uh, my U.S. flag's over here. I mean, I do have one, but it's not in this. It doesn't show up in this camera. Maybe if I turn this, you can see it. There is part of it. What did I do here? I messed up. Uh, yeah, I needed to get something back there. Bushcraft, axe, water, tent, sleeping, making stuff I want to see. Yeah, I'll be sure enough doing it. Um, 
Yeah, I got. I mean, I got all you know the fire starters. I want to go through all that kind of stuff. I've got a another thing that was sent to me to do a review on is this tarp. Uh, and it's a uh, 10 by 10. It's got 19 tie outs on it. And we're going to run through all kinds of, of different shelter configurations you can make out of a tarp like that. You know, just some tips and tricks on, on how I do it. Every, you know, a lot of people do bushcrafting and, and survival channels. This would be kind of like how we do it. You know, two old guys out bike camping <laughs> and try to do this stuff. I don't have uh, anything out of St. Bernard Acres now. Um, we do get a good signal uh, with Verizon out there. So I might be able to to do a little bit of live stuff on my phone. Um, I don't know, though. We'll have to try it out. It'll be interesting to see. I did a Facebook Live out there one time, but that was only like three minutes, <laughs> three or four minutes. But we'll be trying it out. Yeah, I'll have to see what we could do. I know there's uh, there's uh, the, the satellite people. Who's that? HughesNet or something like that. They're out there. But that's too expensive to have. And then, you know, I'm going to have I took all my solar panels out there. I'm going to upgrade the solar. Hi, Becky. I'm so glad you made it. Yeah, I get I got sidetracked too, but <laughs> I, I almost forgot to come back here because, uh, uh, like I said earlier, Gail and Nick are down in Bridgeport, West Virginia, visiting a friend. Hi, Lisa. Uh, said I Alex happened to be in town tonight, so I went down to pick him up. So I almost forgot about this. <laughs> But we're here. Anybody's got anything they want to talk about, holler at me. I think it's it's an absolute travesty that our government felt the need to put a warning for language on our founding documents. You know, it's not a college that did it. It's not a school that did it. It's our government that said there could be harmful language in our our archives. So I don't know what to do about it. I don't know, you know. I just I, I just so see that all the history want they want to wipe out all of our history. So now what history there is has to be watered down. Yeah, Hubs, I, I don't understand. I don't know why people let them do it. I haven't been able to figure that one out either. Um, it, you know what the problem is, and I'm going to tell you what the problem is. <laughs> don't want to get into politics, but this is what happened. You know, I put a thing on Facebook that said, there are no Biden supporters, only Trump haters. The problem we have right now I drive by this house all the time at, from work when I'm making deliveries. I go by this house and they got this giant side of this whole side of their house is painted like, you know, mail pouch tobacco on barns. But it says this was up before the election. And he's still got it up there now. It says vote blue no matter who. So, you know. He got up there. I mean, he got elected with no vetting, you know. I don't know. I get too frustrated with it. And there's no way. There's no way that I can see that we're really going to be uh, able to recover from this. I don't know. You know, it, it Nobody's at fault. You know, I, 
I think what's at fault is three generations of people whose only skill in life really is to wait on a check every month. You know, that's and this started 30 or 40 years ago. This was not something that just popped up and, you know, it started with Joe Biden. This started back in the 80s and the and the 70s with uh, all this, you know, government funding stuff and entitlement programs. So it's been a plan of action for a long time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see that, but it's not, uh, Becky, but it's not going to change anything. That's the sad reality behind it, you know? And I, I look at, <laughs> you know, as, as much as I really don't like it, but I use it all the time at Facebook, right? Prior to the election, 90% of my friends on Facebook were are liberals and, and Democrats. Everything was about Biden and Harris, Biden and Harris. Now you see nothing. Nobody posts anything about it. So I know they regret now. Yeah, that's absolutely true, Hubs. I had said it too. My thing with Donald Trump, the only problem that I had, I did not vote for Donald Trump. I didn't vote for Joe Biden. I didn't vote for any uh, Republican or Democrat. I voted third party. I voted third party in 2016. Um, that's how much of a change I think we need. I think Donald Trump was a, a Good president, if he could have kept his ego <laughs> and his mouth out of it, it could have even been better. But absolutely, the businessman proved that he could fix what's wrong here by looking at it from a business standpoint. So that should have woke everybody up, that there was absolutely no way a 40-year career politician should have won. You know, what a businessman accomplished in four years should have proved to the country the direction it needed to go. But, you know, you're talking about a man who wanted people to go to work, not get free handouts for everything. But America couldn't handle that. They want the guy who's going to give them everything, all the handouts. But, yeah, buyer's remorse. Absolutely, Lisa. Absolutely. You're right. Perhaps, uh, you know, but I don't want to get into that. That's, you know, it, it's we have to figure out a way how to survive this term, you know, and who we're going to get in 2024. I don't think Trump's going to run, and I would not vote for Trump in 2024. I'll tell you a ticket I would consider voting for right now. I haven't, I'm not set in stone, but I would seriously consider uh, Ron DeSantis and uh, Christy Nome. I think they would be a great ticket. I think that could be the future of the Republican Party. But. How's everyone? <laughs> everyone's favorite football team. The Bengals won. They won their first, and they won in overtime. I was so amazed, you know, because the Bengals are the only team that can do, they are the best at losing a game, that they're winning. They're, there's nobody better. Uh, so, yeah, my team won. And, you know, Cleveland, I win. It was so close, Cleveland. Oh, my goodness. I really want Cleveland to win. I hate football. I hate the NFL, but I like watching football. I'm not going to deny it. 
Yeah, Becky, same here. I mean, I like, I'm retired. But I just told him at work three days. That's all I'm going to do Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Kansas City Chiefs. I know. They almost beat him. I was so, oh, I wanted them to win so bad. Hi, Sherry. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I used to be a huge Houston Oilers fan when I lived in Houston. Never was a, a Dallas Cowboy fan. Yeah, Green Bay. What is the deal with Aaron Rodgers? You know, I don't understand what he looked like. He was 10 years older than Tom Brady. You know, he wants to be up there with Tom Brady, but he... I don't know if just too many distractions during the off season and he didn't get himself together in time, but he looked horrible. I mean, he should be benched. You're right, Jeff. The Indy card never did. Yeah, that's a very valid point. I never thought of that one. Everybody else did. Uh, I'm going to start canning this year as soon as I get a canner. Uh, I had a lady give me a whole bunch of jars the other day, so I just got to buy lids for them. But I'm going to buy some green beans and tomatoes and things like that and start practicing my canning. Because next year, we're going to have a big garden. With me being off work, we're going full bones next year. Can you can hot peppers? I do not know. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is with uh, Aaron Rodgers. He's getting married. I don't know. If that gets in the way of his football career, then he needs to give up one of the two. I don't think he hates his team, Beck. I just think he just didn't play. He didn't want to... Uh, uh, he just wasn't ready, as far as I'm concerned. Don't overplant year one. Well, you know, we've planted other stuff. I'm not going to buy big, I guess, in relative terms. It would be like two or three raised beds. <laughs> not a, you know, a big giant garden. Um out at St. Bernard Acres, back behind the barn, I'm going to plant potatoes, beans, squash, and corn. That's all I'm going to worry about out there because I don't think they require a lot of maintenance. And uh, the if I could get my fencing upright, because the animal's out there and I don't live out there, uh, here in... Wheeling, I'll do, you know, the, the, the zucchinis, the peppers and tomatoes and things I've done each year. Only now it's going to be on a much larger scale uh, because I am going to start canning. I just feel the time is here. I mean, it's time to quit talking about, you know, and forget the stigma of being a prepper. I just think it's time you know we have to it's coming yeah i'm not going to go crazy with it i uh you know it's a lot of work i don't think people realize how much work it actually is i was thinking becky of the because i have all that pallet wood you know, it'd be good for a couple, three years before it you know, rots away. But I was thinking of doing literally raised beds and doing like uh, uh, four by six beds raised up a couple feet off the ground, uh, like on post and just build a raised bed that's, you know, two or three feet deep, fill it full of the dirt and everything and just playing on that not even touch the ground 
I don't know if that'll work out or not. Ah, uh, let's see what else is going on. Yeah, I understand the bad back, you know. Uh, I'm fortunate that I've gotten past the bad back, back problems. I don't have a real issue anymore. Uh, you know, a lot of people said that, Sherry. It wasn't just you. A lot of people had problems with tomatoes last year. I don't know. This year, yeah, our tomatoes last year, we had a really, really bad harvest. And a lot of uh, bugs. I mean, I don't use fertilizer. I don't know what got into them. Live simple, live free. That's, that's what it is. That's what St. Bernard Acres is. That's the ultimate goal, uh, to be out there. And once Gail retires, then, you know, my son is buying this house, so I don't have to worry about that. And uh, I just want to live out there and grow what I can and just, I don't know, be away from it. And I've got a short amount of time to learn all the stuff I need to learn that I've been putting off and using the excuse to work, work, work. And it's almost like I went and got another job after I retired so I would have that excuse of work. But with the, I'll, I'll tell you, though, with the weight loss and the you know new eating habits and everything, it's amazing how much more energy I have. And the more stuff that I want to do. So and I was talking with Gary about that last night. It's like the last year or so when I was 300 pounds, you know, I had no, I just, everything was, I drug it. Every, you know, I just, everything was horrible. And now uh, I've got all this energy. So I really am ready to go out and do things. We got to do it. Your son is buying a house. Yep, he wants it, so he gets he gets it really, really cheap too. Because <laughs> he's my son. Last year, my tomatoes took forever and they weren't very productive. The tree was shedding them too much, so I moved them this year. They're still coming in heavy. I telling you what, I'll take tomatoes. I did not get anything worth a crap this year. And I was going to go to the market and buy tomatoes to try to make some salsa to can, maybe some spaghetti sauce to can, different stuff, and then try to can them. And, you know, like I said, it's all an experiment to try to learn. Uh, I'm just, it's time for me to learn this stuff. Let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Max is sleeping. <laughs> it's finally next week. Going to start. Yesterday it was 88 degrees. Our normal high this time of year is 76. Will you work when you're and why if we move out to St. Bernard Acres? I hope not, Jeff. Uh, I don't plan on it. Uh, uh, I don't plan on working. If we have to, obviously we will. Um, it just, you know, it depends when it gets here. That's another year and a half away, so... Things change on a, on a weekly basis around here, it seems like. The barn plans are coming along. Uh, I, I, we're still leaning that way. We're going next Saturday. 
uh, about an hour south of here and looking at uh, single wide mobile homes. If we can find a used mobile home cheap enough, you know, that's affordable, I'm going to move that out there and keep the barn the barn. Um, and I've, I've learned from building this cabin that it's a lot of work. And to think of building like a two bedroom house, I can't afford to have it built for me. So everything I have to do myself, if I can find a used trailer in the, you know, 20 to $30,000 range, I'll just buy that and have it put out there. Hey, Paul, welcome, buddy. Glad you made it tonight. Um, so, yeah, it's the barn build would be awesome. But again, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's some heavy duty work, I guarantee you. I learned that from the cabin. So we just have to see, you know. And I don't know what the price of trailers are anymore. We're going Saturday to look at them next Saturday. Uh, used ones. They also make really, if you know, I started with a shed out there that I was going to convert into the house. And it was too small. Well, now they make them where they're big enough. And I can have a shell put out there that's big enough to go out there. Yes, they will, Becky. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that the township has now. It, I, I think the smaller houses are becoming so popular that they lowered their standards. Uh, and now you don't have to have a well put in out there. Or not a well put in. A septic doesn't have to be professionally installed you can take a class through the county and put your own septic system in once you've taken that class uh so that's it will save a lot of people money you know save a lot of money as well um not having to go through one of their contractors to get a septic so i'll take the class learn how to do it myself and do it and they're just everybody's becoming more friendly to the I don't want to say tiny house community because ours is going to be bigger than the tiny house but they're not requiring 900 square feet anymore so that uh, you know we're going to look at one they have one on display there out by where we're, St. Bernard Acres is that's 16 by 50 <laughs> I, I was like, you know what, if that's and a three-year note on it. So we might do that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Sherry. That's what we're going to look at. And, you know, uh, uh, I was doing really good with what I was building. I mean, I, I was the rooms were getting up, windows in. I mean, I know how to do all that stuff, and I like doing it. But when they said they wouldn't approve it, it's like, well, okay, forget it. This one, they said they would approve when I was talking to them about septic uh, and taking their class how to put a septic system in. Yeah, Paul, it would be, yeah. If, uh, it would be hard to build in the barn. Um, well, it... Not really that, too. I mean, if you think about it, because you already have three of the walls and you're not putting a roof on it. Just I was just going to put a flat roof on it that we could with steps going up to it and all that storage on top of the house. So, you know, I have to get a slate roof fixed. I'd have to get that looked at. And I'm sure that is not cheap. But, you know, I like the barn being a barn. Yes, much, yeah, less labor. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, it just, it was, I, I mean, I love what I did with the cabin, and I'm going to finish it this summer. It's all going to be, like, done, or this fall. But uh, uh, it was a lot of work, and it was very hard. Um, I, you know, I'll be 65 years old next year. I know I can do it. 
but I don't necessarily want to do it anymore. I was all excited about it before. I thought, oh, what a great, great thing to do. Then when I actually did it, I'm not as excited about doing it again. That power age zero sugar. <laughs> Yeah, septic's a big part of it, and now that I don't have to pay three thousand dollars to have a septic system installed, I can put one in myself for less than a thousand, as long as I take their class. And the electric, the way the electric works out there, and I have my solar panels and everything, but to have electric run, they'll run electric poles that run electric to St. Bernard Acres. For four thousand dollars, the deal is: within three years, if I build the shell of a house and put in a septic, they'll give me that four thousand dollars back. Or, if I have a shell there and a septic, they'll run it for free. Uh, they just don't want to run electric out there for somebody who's going to use it two weeks out of the year as a hunting camp, you know. So if I show that I'm going to live there, then they'll run the electric for free. And I'm going to do that. I mean, I love being off grid and I love my solar panels, but I also like the convenience of electricity. And they will buy back the solar that I produce during the day. I get credits for. So I'll have their electric at night. I'll be using mine during the day, theirs at night. And it'll, it'll all wash out to where I shouldn't have an electric bill. Yeah, that, the first thing I had installed out there uh, was a shed that I was going to convert, one of those, you know, rent-to-own sheds. Now, that would be big enough. Now, they wouldn't have a problem with that. But I'm going to look at another one now. I mean, it's even bigger. Uh, I think maybe my tiff with them a few years ago all that we went through over that. Maybe that helped change some of the, the ideas. Um, and they realized that, you know, it's not necessary to have a 900 square foot house. It's just not a necessity. Hey, MB88. All right. Good to see you in here, man. This, this is a lot of fun. You got to start doing these. Uh, I got to start doing them regular and start building an audience. But yeah, welcome, buddy. I'm so glad to see you here. Yeah, I, modular homes are nice. I mean, what I have to think about is I'm 65. Gail's going to be retired next year, year and a half. And we're going to try not to be working. So it's something I don't want to go into debt for. Um, and that's why, I, like, one of these sheds that I can convert now that it's going to be legal out there, um, that might be the way we wind up going. Like I said, Saturday, tomorrow we're going out and looking at that shed and figuring out the cost and everything. Next Saturday, there's a mobile home dealer with used mobile homes about an hour from here. So we're going to go down and look at those also and see what one of that, because Alex is going to buy my house. So that money could be spent, uh, you know, putting something out there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Sherry. Exactly. I'm so happy Dale's here. That's so cool. Uh, but yeah, we're going to, you know, well, it has to be whatever I'm going to do. You know, I've always said this entire time with St. Bernard Acres, 
there are no plans. Everything is fluid. It just has to change as situations change. But this winter, you know, the cabin's going to be finished as far as the cabin goes. But our living quarters has, we have to make that decision this winter. And spring, if it's going to be a trailer, if it's going to be a shed conversion, if it's going to be building in the barn, that decision has to be made this winter to where we can get it in place next spring. Yeah, Dale, you, you can send some of that stuff to me. My P.O. box is here. Uh, yeah, Dale, uh, I'll run it by again real quick. They'll run the electric. I could call them and say, I want electric out here. It's $4,000 for them to run it. But within three years, if I build the shell of a home and put in a septic, they give me the $4,000 back. Or if I have the septic system in and a the shell of a home, they'll run it for free. They just don't want to run it to a guy who's going to use it as a hunting cabin two weeks out of the year. But once they see it's going to be a permanent thing, they'll run it for free. And then, yeah, they with all of my solar, when I finish setting that up, I'll have a what's called a grid tide converter. So everything I produce during the day that I don't use, they will give me credit for. Then at night, I have their electric that I can use and not worry about a huge battery bank. So it works out real good either way. Uh, how, <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to have electric because I want the conveniences of it. I'm telling you, I'm not going to have enough money to put a solar system to run central air and washer and dryer and all the things. I keep telling people they think you're off grid. I don't go to the creek to wash my clothes. I'm not going, you know, it's not a primitive lifestyle I'm after. Not at all. Uh, uh, the polls, uh, let's see, across the road, down the road, up to my property. They have to add three poles. And it's like $1,000 per pole. And um, is about how they figure it. And that would put it, it would be 200 amp service I'd be getting. And I would use 100 amp in the house and I'd run 100 amp to the bar. Uh, or because I don't need more than 100 amp service, you know, regardless. So I would put 100 amp at the bar so I could run anything when I put my shop in the bar and I could run anything out there that I want. But we'll see how that works out. I mean, you know. Uh, until then, you know, I got Bobby's electric and a well, you know, just to bring up the speed, I can do a well. Uh, there's a well on Bobby's property next to me that they put in in the 90s. And it's like 30 feet across the property line. But Bobby can't use it because he built his cabin so far back. You can't put a pump in there to pump water that far, so it's just sitting there. And he said, I could use it if I wanted to. I'm going to put a solar panel there and a battery, and we're going to drop a pump down there. I will run it to my cabin, and he will be able to run it to a tank halfway to his cabin, and then a pump in that, and then take it further. Uh, so as long as Bobby's there and he doesn't plan on selling his property either, you know, we have a well. But if a well had to be put in, when I checked with the county, got the records for this one, the water table is at 28 feet. They only put in a 100-foot casing and never had a problem with water. So only having to go down 100 feet is, uh, you know, it's not going to be expensive if I had to put a well in. But we got springs out there as a whole long water source.
Yeah, I like the fact that they'll give you the refund back. I thought that was pretty cool. You were playing with your springs. Yes, absolutely. That is something that is uh, I'm definitely going to work on. I, you know, it's still running. You know, I played around with it, put a bucket in there and the pipe running out. And all year long, that pipe runs. And like I said, Bobby's property, he's got three. They had three developed springs on his half of the farm. You know, so they're on my half as well. It's just not a word. My half was the barn and mostly pasture land for this farm that I got part of and Bobby got part of. Um, so there was never a need to develop anything over on my half, but it's there. I just have to learn how to do it because I know there's one that feeds the stream that runs all the way at the back of my property down in the valley. There's a stream that runs and it originates halfway up the hill on my property. That's where it's coming out at starts. So we've got one over there as well. I don't just, you know, like I said, I don't have to worry about water. Water's there. Electric will be there. And so I'm ready to move out there once I get something put in place. Uh, but starting next week, I have to work. Let's say I'm off Monday. I work Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm off Thursday. I work Friday, Saturday. And then that's the last week I work like that. If I, you know, I'll have four days a week, I can stay out there. Yeah, those are awesome, Lisa. They really are. Uh, Alex had some friends of his out at the cabin last year when I was working with that spring, at, or two years ago, and they love that water. That water is so cold and pure. Yes, that haunted house is still there. Uh, he hasn't taken it down yet. He's going to. It's deteriorating pretty bad. But it's still there, and I still look at it every now and then. I hate seeing it over there. We might, uh, it's gotten so bad though, I won't even go in it anymore. Not because it's haunted, but it's deteriorated that much. Um, cats live in it now. I guess they're not bothered by the ghost. But, uh, yeah, it's still there. But it's not mine, so I can't do anything with it. If he would. It's kind of funny because the guy from the electric company, speaking of electric, said if Bobby tore that house down, then the pole that's on Bobby's side of the property, they could just come straight across to my side and put a pole. So there'd only be one needed, but they're not allowed to go over a house like that. Um, because that house is sitting there, they've got to put a pole across our road from his, go across the road, then down the road to mine, then across the road up onto my property. All right, Becky, I'm so glad you stopped by. It was great talking to you. You have a good night and a good rest of the weekend. I'll see you Wednesday night. Yeah, that, yeah, it'd be great for irrigation. You know, there is absolutely no city water out there, no city sewer, nothing like that. But at the rate property is being sold out there and people are building and moving out there, in another five years, it's going to be pretty crowded. We might turn into our population in the area is about 300. It might be. 3,000 in a few years at the rate it's going. And uh, uh, property values, oh my gosh. Oh man, it, it, I think about what we paid for ours and what people are paying today. Holy crap. No, that's not Dr. Pepper. That's Powerade, no sugar free. Um, and I drink Dr. Pepper now, but it's Dr. Pepper Zero. That's all I drink.
And I had no more Dr. Pepper. Not till I at least, you know, every now and then now I will get a small Dr. Fountain Dr. Pepper because I love Dr. Pepper. And I'll get every now and then I'll get a small Dr. Pepper. Uh, now I don't mind it at all. My blood sugar is completely, that's a non-issue anymore. I believe it was all brought on by the weight. <laughs> it's funny, Dale. Yeah, you don't see them anymore. Remember my giant mug I used to have every time I did a video, I'd have a giant mug of Dr. Pepper. Because I would stop on the way out there and fill that thing. I was like a half a gallon of Dr. Pepper. I'd drink it. But yeah, no more Dr. Peppers. Dang it. I'm uh, down 69 pounds now. So as long as I can keep doing that, there won't be any Dr. Peppers. But I want to get out and start cooking like you do, man. You have some of the best meals. Ah, that's every time I watch one of your videos, I crave food. Yeah, 69 pounds. Uh, I'm shooting for, well, I've mentioned it before. My, uh, I met with the personal trainer at the gym uh, this week, Thursday, I think, Wednesday. And uh, he said, what's your goal as far as weight loss goes? I said, I want to get down to 200 pounds. And he said, not anymore. You want to get to 199. Get below the two, drop the two. Like, okay. Because in February, I weighed 302 pounds. And this morning, I weighed 233. Oh, heck yeah, I do that in a heartbeat. Oh. And you know what? I, I may very well do that. We want to visit uh, one of the places that we've never really been, neither one of us. We've been all over this country. Uh, but one of the places we've never really visited to visit anybody or, or to stay is up in the Northeast, Maine, uh, up through there, uh, you know, and that's one of, that's on the bucket list for me is to go up there. I love to have a moose steak, moose, uh, moose steak. Yeah, we'll have a big meeting up there, Hubs. We won't tell him. We'll just all show up one night. <laughs> Where's that moose steak? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sherry, uh, we, there's a guy I work, well, where I used to work, where Gail works. He drinks six bottles uh, of Dr. Pepper during his shift. I was 100% addicted to it since I was six years old. I've drank Dr. Pepper. And five years ago or so, we quit smoking. And I'm telling you what, it was easier to quit smoking than it was to quit. I had more withdrawal symptoms from the Dr. Pepper than I did from cigarettes. It is very addictive. Banger, Maine. I think my attraction to Maine is Stephen King. Because <laughs> so many of his books, especially the early ones, were Maine. Uh, and my absolute favorite book of all time, you know, like I mentioned, there's just three of them, of all time, though, is The Stand. And Franny Goldsmith from Algonquin, Maine. Uh, the only character in the book I ever fell in love with. Uh, I quit smoking. It was, um, how did I quit? I just quit. I just stopped, you know. Uh, I'll tell you a trick that might help. And the... The amazing thing to me is Gail and I quit the same day. Um, I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. She smoked a pack and a half a day. That was, uh, it was $19 a day for cigarettes. Put a jar on the kitchen table 
And whatever you spend in cigarettes, put in that jar every morning, right, instead of the cigarettes. So you're going to try to quit, and you know you can quit for a week or two. You know, you can go that far. That extra motivation is going to be when you look in that jar and see how much money is there. After just a week or two of, of instead of stopping and buying those cigarettes, putting it in that jar, you'd be amazed at how much money. Yes, the stand was absolutely, I read it probably every three years I reread it, starting from 1970s. I think 1978 was the first time I read it. Oh, absolutely. And uh, what it did, I'm telling you, one of the things about smoking that I didn't know until I quit was how many things we couldn't do because we didn't have the money for it. No matter how broke we were, we always had cigarettes. And now that we quit cigarettes, it's amazing how many things that we can do now that I didn't even know we were missing out on because the cigarettes came first. So it was a great habit to give up. But you know what? I, I am not one of those people. If you smoke, fine. You know, I am not going to try to talk you out of it or I'm not going to turn my nose up at you or say anything bad. I did it. I, you know, I'm glad I quit. But if you don't want to quit, don't quit. And I always said, I very much enjoyed smoking. If I came down with some kind of a terminal illness or, or had a diagnosis that I had six months left to live, on my way home from the doctor, I'd stop by a pack of cigarettes because I really enjoyed them. But, you know, now we're doing a lot of stuff with money we didn't have before. So it worked out okay, I guess. Oh, man. This is awesome. But I've been on here over an hour now, and I need to give it up. I want to go visit with my son. He's in town for the night, and uh, I can have some time with him a little bit. But this has been fantastic once again. I appreciate you guys showing up. You know, it, it's part of my motivation to keep going with this and uh, get this channel going again. Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Saturday night at 8 o'clock. That's going to, I hope, be my schedule. So um, I'll be putting up a couple of videos between now and Wednesday. But remember, we're going to try to do another live stream Wednesday night. Have some questions for me or if you got uh, any ideas or subjects you want to talk about, uh, uh, hit me up. Let me know. Leave a message on one of my videos. Hey, let's talk about this on your live stream. Or add me on Facebook, Joe Waller on Facebook. <laughs> add me there. You can tell me what to talk about. Um, but yeah, hey, Dale, it was great, man. I loved it. I'm so glad you got to come by, too. And everybody. Let's everybody have a, the rest of the weekend. Be great. Have a good night. And I'll see everybody next Wednesday night. Thank you all for stopping by.